So let's talk a little bit about the sign star action. So on your turn, instead of developing a show, you can sign a star. So in a four player game, there's always five stars to choose from. Here's four stars. We've already taken a look at the celebrity chef. Let's take another look at him. The celebrity chef has a $1 signing cost. So that means that in order to get the celebrity chef in your green room, you're gonna have to spend $1. And the celebrity chef, or any star for that matter, as soon as you sign them, goes into your green room. They don't go onto one of your shows. Uh, they have to sit around for a little bit. It's uh, contractual requirements. Now let's look over here at the socially conscious star. The socially conscious star is similar to the celebrity chef. She costs a little bit more money. And she's actually good in the third season as opposed to the celebrity chef who tends to fizzle out. But you'll notice that there's this one dollar in the upper right hand corner. Uh, that's upkeep. So just like some shows you have to pay upkeep on, the socially uh, conscious star you're going to have to pay upkeep on as well. So uh, she's actually going to cost you one dollar at the end of each season once she's on a show, as well as the three dollars to sign her to get in your green room. Uh, one thing about this upkeep cost, you do not have to pay upkeep costs for stars in your green room. So let's look at this star over here. This is the comedian your parents like. The thing about this comedian is the comedian wants to be on a sitcom. So let's say we put this comedian on the Wacky TS agent. Well, in this case, the comedian's happy. They're in their element and they will go on their high scoring side. But let's say that instead of putting them on this kind of show, we put them on Chainmail Bikini Warrior, which is a sci-fi show. Well, that's not a sitcom doesn't have the sitcom icon as uh, the wacky TSA agent did. So to reflect that, the comedian is actually going to rotate instead of scoring two and four, the comedian's going to rotate to the gray side and only score two and one extra points. And uh, so there's a little bit of planning you're going to have to do in order to maximize viewers from your shows and stars. So let's look at this next star. This is the director, writer, editor star. And the thing about this star is he wants to do everything himself. Let's say it's a little bit later in the game and you put him on Dexterous all by himself. He's pretty happy because he's the only star on the show. But let's say when you get Dexterous, you also want to pair him with the celebrity chef. Well, in that case, he's not as happy because he's not the only star on the show. So he's actually gonna rotate over to his gray side, uh, which is not worth as many viewers, and then you'll put the celebrity chef underneath. So you're still gonna score a fair amount for the star, but not as much as you could because you didn't plan it out so well. And this game really does reward that sort of planning. So we can have some fun with this. We have stars that are known for different things. This star is known for always dying in every show he's on. So this star doesn't care whether they're on a sitcom and they don't care if they're the only star, but it's up to you what side to put them on. So you can put them on here where they'll get you a big payoff in the third season, but you know, they'll sort of build up to that. Or you can be all dramatic and kill them off in the first season if you wish. This brings us to ads. So here are some representative ads and we'll start with a simple one. The Potato Nader. So ads are a little bit different. When you do the land ad action and you land this ad, you don't pay money, you actually get money. So this ad will give you $3 for picking it up and putting it in your green room. And then when you put the ad on a show, any show, it doesn't care as long as it has an ad prerequisite, it will get you $1 at the end of each season. And again, you can only get this dollar if you have the ad on one of your shows at the end of the season. Then we get to this ad. This ad wants to be on a show that's on at 10 p.m. So if it's on at 10 p.m., the ad will get you $2. You'll notice in this case, this show normally has an upkeep cost of $1, but I've turned it from minus $1 to plus $1. So ads can be very useful to offsetting some of these expensive shows. However, it's possible that you chose to put this ad on a show that wasn't at 10 p.m. Let's say you put it on American Samurai Warrior, and let's say this is a sports show and it's on at 9 p.m. So uh, let's say you had put the show on at 9 p.m. The ad won't be as happy and now it'll only get you $1, which is not as good, especially for those expensive sports shows. 
Diet Sugar Cola is kind of interesting. It wants you to have a big, deep ad campaign. So it wants you to have ads left in your green room. So if uh, you had, say, um, illicit Alana's illuminations in your green room when you put this ad on very charismatic explosions, let's say, then it would go on its proper side. Let's say you didn't have this ad. Well, in that case, if you had an empty green room, this ad would go on its blank side and you would actually not get any money for it. And there are times when you may want to do this if you really, really need to put a show and it's got an ad prerequisite. But in this case, the ad won't actually get you any money. And finally, we have the promos. So the promos are interesting because they can actually get you viewers similar to stars. But in order to do that, you've got to pay money at the moment when you put it on the show. So if I got very charismatic explosions, spent the $1 development cost, and spent the $5 development cost, I would get to put this ad, this promo, on my show and start to lure viewers in to watch the show. Had I decided to not pay the $5, once again, I'm sure you figured this out, you rotate this and you don't get any viewers. So let's say you had this show, Old Folks Complaining. As I've mentioned before, you're completely allowed to put it in your lineup without a star or an ad. But it's later in the game and you have decided that you want to put a star on it. So one thing you can do is you can take an action to simply attach a star or an ad. And this costs one action, so you spend one action, you put the star on the show, and that's it. That's your turn. So let's say it's later in the game, and you've gotten this star, and you want to put this star on this show. Well, you can, but you'll notice the show can only hold one star. So as part of the attach star action, you would fire the star, and the star would actually get discarded out of the game and you would put the new star in. And it's the only star on the show, so it goes on its happy side. So yes, you can attach a star or an ad, but there are times when you have to fire the star that's already on the show because you have to honor the show's prerequisites. And incidentally, if I had um, this star on the show and I wanted to replace it with uh, that really nice promo that I had before, I could because this show allows me to. It can hold either a star or an ad, and in this case, I would spend the $5 to put it on this side. So let's say I have the director, writer, editor, star, the one that wants to be the only star on the show. I have him on this show, and later I attach the celebrity chef. I actually don't rotate uh, the director, writer, editor, star, uh, because you don't have to check the conditions once you have a star on the show. So now that the star is on the show, I can disregard these conditions. The star has already signed the contract. They don't really have a say in it anymore. So I can do what I want, and that makes upkeep a little bit easier. Let's say it's later in the game, and I decide I want to cancel Dextrous and replace it with some other show. I'm going to put Dextrous in reruns, rotating it as normal, and these stars or any ads that might be on the show get discarded. They go out of the game. So any stars or ads that you may have on a show that gets canceled are gone. You do not get to keep them. So looking at the possible actions, uh, we've described the develop show action, we've described sign star, we've described land ad. I'm skipping take network card for now, we're going to get back to that one later, and I just explained attach star ad. That leaves drop and budget. So how does drop and budget work? It's pretty simple. Remember that we're each taking one turn and we're going to go in this turn order that was randomly determined at the start of the game. And maybe at some point we're the red player, we decide that we've had enough actions, there's not enough cards left, uh, not enough stuff to do, so we're going to drop out of the season. So we're going to collect $8 because we're filling the first spot and now our season is over. We get no more actions for the rest of the season. Uh, what that means is everybody else keeps on going. Uh, so blue would get a turn, green would get a turn, and so forth. And if blue wanted to drop out as well, now blue gets $7, and so on and so forth. Maybe green does something, and then purple drops out, and now green is the only one left in the round. Now green can do as much as they want, and then when green decides that they've had enough, they will drop 
and take the final space. And that ends our season.